Hello and welcome to a tactical history of Liverpool. Just two days after Christmas 1967, Liverpool said goodbye to another player as Willie Stevenson left for Stoke City. Stevenson wrote himself into Liverpool history when he scored a penalty that sealed Liverpool's place in the final for their first FA Cup win. And he was still a top quality player, performing brilliantly both in midfield and at left back the previous season. Having only just turned 28, Stevenson still had a future ahead of him. However, with the arrival of Emlyn Hughes and Ian St. John getting moved back into midfield, the Scott dropped down the pecking order, making just one league appearance so far this season. Tommy Smith believed Bill Shankly's respect for Stevenson is what caused him to let his compatriot go, saying, Shanks liked Willie as a man and appreciated what he had done for Liverpool. He wouldn't have denied him an opportunity of continuing to play first division football once Stoke showed an interest. Entering 1968, Liverpool were in need of a comeback if they were going to advance in the Intercity's Fairs Cup. Considered the precursor to the UEFA Cup, the Intercity's Fairs Cup was actually run by FIFA executives, meaning its winners aren't officially recognised by UEFA. Starting in 1955, the same year as the European Cup, its rules were slightly more convoluted than its more prestigious cousins. To qualify, your city had to host an international trade fair, and only one team from each city could enter. In early seasons, representative teams made up of players from various clubs were fielded, but it gradually became more common for individual clubs to take the spot, and in 1964, they became tied to league position. The 67-68 season was Liverpool's first run of the competition. It started well, advancing past Malmo in the first round 4-1 in aggregate, and they made short work of 1860 Munich in the second round, beating them 8-0 in the first leg to render the second a formality. Things would get more complicated in the third round though, when Liverpool were drawn against Ferenc Varos. Ferenc Varos were, and still are, Hungary's most successful club, having won a record 17 league titles in the first half of the 20th century. They faded away in the 50s, with Honved taking their place at the top, but the Hungarian Revolution ruined Honved, seeing many of their best players flee the country. This was good timing for Ferenc Varos from a footballing perspective. A star man Florian Albert was just beginning his career in senior football as the 60s began. He would lead them to league titles in 1963, 1964 and 1967, as well as the Intercity Fairs Cup in 1965, defeating Juventus in the final to make Ferenc Varos the only Hungarian club to have won a European trophy, before being named European Footballer of the Year in 1967. Having won 24 of 27 games on the way to their latest league title, Liverpool's opponents clearly weren't pushovers. The first leg hadn't gone well, with Liverpool fortunate to return home only one goal down. They were lucky to return at all, with the squad sealed in their plane while airport staff cleared ice and snow from the runway. It was touch and go as to whether Budapest Airport would close before the plane could take off. Six weeks later, Liverpool hosted Ferenc Barros at Anfield. Shankly made one change to the side scene in episode 17, with Jeff Strong replacing Tony Haitley. Having failed to score in his previous five games, there were question marks over how Haitley was fitting in at Liverpool. He was dropped for the 4-1 victory over West Brom three days earlier, and given his replacement strong open the scoring after just three minutes, it was an easy choice for Shankly to continue with a winning 11, especially as strike partner Roger Hunt managed a hat-trick in his absence. Hunt had become Liverpool's record goalscorer in November, surpassing Gordon Hodgson's total of 241. Liverpool set up in a 4-2-4 formation. With Albert still missing through injury, Ferenc Varos put out the same team from the first leg, lined up in a 3-2-5 shape. The first leg had taken place in snowy conditions in Budapest, and now, six weeks later, at the other end of Europe, the return leg would be played on a white pitch too. For two teams that liked to pass the ball, this was an issue. The ball would get caught up in the snow and the players were running slower, making it harder to perform and judge passes. As a result, both teams often looked to play the ball in the air rather than along the ground. The circumstances of the time made this much easier for Ferenc Varos than Liverpool though. Having the lead meant the Hungarians were happier to drop off and protect it. They sat with a back three, but the wing halves would drop very deep, close to the defender so that they often resembled a back five. Isvan Juhas would push forward to link the defence and attack when Ferenc Varos had the ball. However, Lyos Schuch stayed deeper to protect his defence throughout the game. With Liverpool going long, even if they won the initial header, with so many players in this area, Ferenc Varos had a very good chance at winning the second ball. The same applied to the wide areas. Even if a Liverpool winger could beat his full-back, Ferenc Varos had a wing half covering behind him. This wasn't exactly new though. Pretty much every English team played this way before the widespread adoption of the back four in the mid-60s, and we saw way back in episode one how it could reinforce the defence but leave space in midfield. Ferenc Varos made efforts to close this gap between defence and attack though, having Laszlo Branikovic and Yulia Rakoshi track back into midfield to fill the space. Liverpool were generally kicking the ball over the midfield rather than moving through it, 
But when they did attempt to be more patient, it wasn't working. Emlyn Hughes had a horrible game, giving the ball away frequently, while East St. John had the right ideas but was struggling to make them a reality in the snow. Tommy Smith was heavily involved throughout and probably Liverpool's best player. He was pushing up into midfield as usual, but he was often trying to hit the front men quickly rather than being more patient. Whereas Liverpool were having little success going long, France Varos were looking more dangerous. This was because while Liverpool were trying to attack a closed-up defence, Ferenc Varos had space to play into, as Liverpool were committing men forward in search of a goal. Ferenc Varos would hit passes in behind them to catch them on the counter. Ferenc Varos also made more of an effort to play along the turf, or more accurately snow, than Liverpool. Thanks to the conditions, this clearly wasn't easy to do, and they played themselves into trouble more than once when Liverpool pressed them. Thompson! A good shot! They were looking better than Liverpool, however. France Varos were able to mitigate the effect of the snow by playing short passes into feet, and their front line suited this style of play, constantly coming short and swapping positions. It was a neat passing move that saw them take the lead after just 19 minutes on the night. Sandor Katona won the second ball and knocked it back to Ravoshi in midfield, and he squared it to Juhas, who took his time, shaping to pass right. Before squeezing a ball in between Liverpool's midfielders for Zoltan Varga between the lines, Ron Yates stepped out of defence to meet Varga, but the 23-year-old moved it on very quickly, controlling it with his left to play it on with his right in one movement. Pranikovic attacked the gap Yates had left by stepping out to meet Varga, receiving the ball and finishing past Tommy Lawrence. Now with a two-goal lead and an away goal, France Varos were even happier to sit back and soak up any Liverpool pressure. The attackers were pulled back deeper into midfield, leaving Liverpool players surrounded when they picked up the ball. Varga was generally the man left in attack for Ferenc Varos, and he was keen to show off his trickery, posing a problem for the Liverpool defence. In the second half, Liverpool were becoming increasingly frustrated as they puffed and puffed only to have nothing to show for it, lashing out in what was otherwise a clean game, particularly given the conditions. Given her insistence on going long, starting Haitley would have made more sense for Liverpool due to his aerial presence, especially as his replacement strong was usually used in midfield. The striker was on the bench for Liverpool, and so could have been introduced, However, Shankly had an agreement with his players that he would only substitute them if they were injured. Liverpool were unfortunate in that any attempts to play their usual passing game would have been hamstrung by the weather, but Ferenc Varos had the same problems and coped much better. The Reds were simply outplayed by a very good side, and their supporters acknowledged this by clapping off the opposition at the end of the game. Not only did the defeat see Liverpool knocked out of the Intercity's Fairs Cup, but it also meant the end of their unbeaten home record in Europe. Ferenc Varos would make it all the way to the final, defeating Athletic Bilbao and Bologna on the way, who would fall at the last hurdle, losing 1-0 to Leeds United over two legs. It was a disappointing way for Liverpool to exit the competition, although, sitting second in the league, we were still in a good position to finish the season with a trophy. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel. You can get updates on what I'm doing by following on Twitter and Facebook, links are in the description, but most importantly by supporting Holding Midfield on Patreon. Without financial support, I can't justify the time it goes into making these videos to keep the channel alive while also receiving access to premium content. Thanks for watching.